Are you ready to experience the ultimate family destination? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> in this video, we're going to take you on a tour of Silver Dollar City and show you all the highlights from all of our trips in 2022, as well as share some tips with you to help you make the most out of your next visit. All right, first let's talk about the park itself, getting there, and then we'll talk about the tickets and all that. So getting to the park is really easy. It's There's plenty of signs. There's major roads going to it in Branson, um, and it's really easy to find. Now, parking, on the other hand, might be a little bit trickier for you once you enter the park um, on the main road. If you stay in the right lane, it's going to take you to the parking section that is paid parking, and that is the closest to the park entrance, but you have to pay for it. If you don't want to pay for parking, you should stay in the left lane, and that will take you on to their normal parking lots. And there are a bunch of parking options available, and I think there's like six lots total, maybe more than that. Yeah, I mean, they're always adjusting and changing and adding so I know that their parking area just got a makeover, so it may have changed a little bit for oh, this season. Okay. But overall parking is pretty good. And then they also have uh, trams or shuttles that run from the different parking lots back to the park entrance. So it's really convenient. And if you don't want to wait for a tram or a shuttle, depending on how many people are at the park at, at that time, uh, you can always walk too. And actually you preferred walking. I did. It was like maybe a five... Uh, I think maybe at the most, like the furthest parking lot, which I think is six level, um, parking lot six was a, probably about a 10 minute walk, but it was super quick. And, uh, the shuttles were running pretty frequently about every five minutes. Um, you would have another one coming. Um, typically they, I mean, they just, they were really well working on their system. They're really efficient. It seems like now there can be times when um, you know, it makes more sense to wait for the tram. There's other times when it makes more sense to walk. And usually that depends on how many people are waiting to get into the park. So if there's a really long line for the tram station, you might just want to avoid that and just walk in up to the front gate. It also depends on your kids. And the kids too. Yeah. <laughs> if you want them to wear, get worn out before you get to the park, then go ahead and walk. But yeah. if not, maybe you should wait for the tram. Well, and then leaving, we had some issues, um, typically with a tired five-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so speaking of the park itself, uh, once you get up to the front entrance, you have options to purchase tickets on the right side of the main entrance. And then on the left side is where you actually enter the park. And that area is pretty free flowing. It's not typically congested unless they're really, really busy. Uh, maybe during some of the holidays, especially like when we went during the Christmas festival, it got a little packed, but that it was packed everywhere, including the parking lots. But in general, it flows really well. And in order to avoid purchasing tickets, you can also get season passes. Yeah. I mean, the season passes were great, especially if we went more than two days, which we did. Um, it was worth the money because we were able to get in and see the park. We could leave when we want. We could come back. Um, and then we came back the several times throughout the season. But again, I think it was like, it would pay itself off if we went more than twice. Um, and so Kagan fell in the year of where he was able to get a free pass. I believe this year it's 28, uh, 2018 and 2019 that they offer the um, a free adventure pass is what they call so it. So basically if you're born in 2018 and 2019? 2019, then, then you okay. get the ticket enter for free. or It's a free season pass. Now you don't get any of the extra benefits as what you do with the paid passes, but it was totally worth it to help pay uh, reduce the cost. Yeah. So what were the, there are three different levels, I think, of the season passes. Do you remember what those are? Those were silver, gold, and diamond. So for silver, you got some, I mean, it was a basic like 10% um, off of your food and dining, not including the, um, oh, what are those places? Concessions. Concessions. Like, conce like the popcorn and things like that. And that yeah. was key to know. And yeah. I mean, they definitely reminded you. <laughs> yeah. But they, and they would also, they were great. Everybody's great. Everybody's right. Really nice. They would yeah. remind you, be, would always ask, do you have a season pass? So then they could offer you that discount. It wasn't just like, oh, you didn't mention it. So therefore you don't get it. Yeah. And then you get discounts on all the different, um, like the Branson Bell, uh, the showboat Branson Bell. Um, and also for like uh, their campground and things like that. Um, the gold pass, you get some, uh, a deeper discount, like I think it's 15% and, um, you get some other things like a souvenir mug, um, that you can actually get drinks for a discounted price, um, which also then carries onto the diamond pass, which is also like a 20% discount on, at the food places. I think dime, is diamond where you actually save on concessions too, I believe. Right. Uh, I believe so. And then also you get things like bring a friend passes and 
Um, you also will get like reserved seating at some of the concerts and uh, shows. So it just depends on what matters to you the most. Yeah, it's for us, it worked out really, really well. We definitely um, would do that again. We're not necessarily planning on going as much to Silver Dollar City this year. We're probably going to go explore different places. But last year, since we were going so frequently, it was really, really beneficial. So highly recommend getting a season pass if you're thinking about going for more than two days. And we definitely, if, I mean, we weren't trying to go different places, we'd probably be back there yeah. again this year. It was <laughs> so much fun. The kids beg still to go. Yeah. So speaking of kids, one thing we've learned is that they actually have a measuring station. So each ride has these certain height requirements that they need to meet. And Kagan being, you know, about 43 inches tall, he just barely squeaked by on some of them. And so, so we would have to get him measured at the, each thing until one day, a um, one of the people that were checking is like, you know, you could go down to the kid's landing, the fireman's landing, and they will actually give you a wrist bracelet for, um, to designate how tall he is so we don't have to go through this whole process. So that was really helpful. That way he could just go and we stand in line, get on and not hold up everyone else that was trying to hurry up and move through. So I think that was awesome. I agree. Um, something else, a couple of more highlights of the park itself. There are some charging stations that are scattered around the park. So if you have to recharge your cell phone, for example, just be sure to bring your cord and you can plug into, there's some trees, like tree stump things that have some charging base or charging plugins in it. And those that's pretty nice and convenient. One of the tips was also to log in uh, with their Wi-Fi pass, uh, password. And that way you don't have to eat your battery as much um, because it's constantly searching. Um, the Wi-Fi signal isn't great necessarily. The Wi-Fi the signal is great, but or the, the is, cell yeah. signal is not great. Yeah. Yeah. So to be able to talk to each other and things, definitely get on the Silver Dollar City Wi-Fi. Um, I think, what was it? That very last trip we had, we did not do it and we could not communicate and we ended up getting separated for like, I don't know, 40 minutes or something. And we were at completely opposite ends of the park trying to find each other. All right, so now that you're in the park, the next thing you're going to want to do is ride a ride. Actually, probably not. You might want to get some food first. You know, those smells <laughs> just kind of gravitate you to those um, stops. It's like, mmm, funnel cake. Oh. Yeah, or cinnamon the, rolls. When yeah. you first enter the park, you that, smell cinnamon rolls, and you, you want to stop and get those right away, but it's probably a bad idea. Or the uh, barbecue, the brisket, and yeah. uh, the skillets and everything. It's just all very mouth-watering as you're walking through. So there's a couple of things. You can either purchase the, you know, what you're smelling at that moment, or you can actually bring in food from outside. It's one of the, one of the only parks that will let you actually bring your own f drinks and uh, food, which is awesome, especially when you have little kids that are constantly wanting to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so and you yourself. Can, <laughs> right. So you can bring in your favorite snacks and have those available for those in-between times when you're not wanting to buy additional food. Or waiting in line. Keep the kids happy yeah, while you're waiting in line. So that's a really great option. So be sure to take advantage of that when you go visit Silver Dollar City. But otherwise, another way to te uh, test all the foods and different things like that would be the passports that they offer during festivals. Those are really handy because you're uh, trying out new foods that they might have and they're smaller portions. So you're not getting completely full and then you know what you want to actually buy a full meal of. Yeah. The other thing that's nice to know is when they have different festivals throughout the year, which we'll talk about here in a minute, um, they do have different food options available too. So if you do happen to go to the park multiple times throughout the year, you have a, a huge variety of foods that you can change from or try you have a huge variety of foods that you can choose from as well as different uh, staples that they keep around all the time. So if you have your favorites like with skillets or the pizza place, which was my probably one of my favorite places to go consistently in Silver Dollar City, then you can depend on that and have some variety thrown in the mix as well. Yeah, like the um, street corn we tried. That yeah, was a that was delicious great. one. Yeah, I wanted to really try um, the Nutter Butter Fluff. Um, the, sandwich. Yeah, the yeah. sandwich. And we never could find it. That was one of our ones. Like we were always too late to actually get to that place where it was serving or something. Now, what was the kid's favorite thing to eat or to drink, I should say, that uh -oh. they asked for every single time? The cocoa? Yeah, hot chocolate. <laughs> hot chocolate, yeah. I mean, that, we had a couple of meltdowns <laughs> just because, like, I want that. Yeah. And we learned some good tricks on that one, too. 
in the way of going to the Starbucks and because they will give it to you in a different cup, which that's actually another tip of the type of cup to get. Yeah. So we ended up purchasing, they have different options when it comes to drinks. You can, you know, buy drinks as you go throughout the park, uh, like with a disposable cup. They also have another drink mug that you can get with a season pass or purchase on its own that will give you discounts with the different drinks. So you still have to pay for refills and things like that, but it's, it's discounted. They also have another option and that is to buy a silver dollar city. What is this thing called? This is a, this is a mug. It's, a it's like a VIP mug. Let's see if it can. It's not focusing in. Yeah, hydrize. Hydrize. There we go. So there's the VIP mug. And so what this does is it lets you get free refills on pretty much any drink in the park, including Starbucks drinks. Yeah, the only which thing is it amazing. didn't count was ice cream drinks. Yeah, it didn't count ice cream drinks. I think there may have been one other category too. I can't remember yeah. what that was, but pretty much anything you can go up to them and say, I like this. The other thing you can do with this is if you do go to a Starbucks and say you want uh, coffee or something like that, you can show them the mug and then they'll fill up a normal like Starbucks disposable cup for you. So that way you can keep that separate and uh, not have to constantly rinse this out if you don't want to. Yeah, that was our key. That was one of my favorite parts. It's just like I would go in there and <laughs> show them the mug and then we could have a different one. And that way we could just keep on going and it could be cooling down in a different cup as because this does keep things really hot or really cold. Yeah. Um, slushies was another one of the kids' slushies, favorites. Slushies, yeah. And they tried many, many different types. Frozen lemonades. For, they have like a frozen lemonade, like strawberry lemonade, I think was their favorite, yeah. one of their favorites. So yeah, definitely get one of these. Um, you might not want to buy one of these mugs if you're only going to go for a day or two because these are not cheap. But if you're going to go frequently throughout the year, this is definitely something you should really seriously consider investing in uh, in addition to your normal season ticket. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I want to mention too is if you do have a season pass to Silver Dollar City, you do have uh, some secret menu options that are available to you for food. So there are some things to consider with that as well. And uh, also with the season pass, I think you probably already mentioned it, that there's disc yeah, there's discounts to uh, the different food places that are varied between you know whatever level of uh, season pass you purchase, including concession discounts. So those are some ways that you can save some money when you go to the park. Well, and those secret items are only available for the um, more like the diamond pass and maybe gold. Oh, okay. So silver does not get the um, secret items, which I was a little disappointed by. Yeah, good to know. <laughs> but oh, and on back on the cup, you do get a discount if you have a season pass too. So it, like for the silver, it was 10% off. Oh. So definitely check that out too. Now, probably the most obvious thing about the park, you're probably wanting to know more about the rides at the park. And so the rides are a lot of different options and something for everybody of each family member, everything from, you know, really, really intense roller coasters all the way down to, you know, kiddie rides that aren't very thrilling at all. But uh, everybody in the family had something to choose from. I personally don't care for uh for that many rides but even with me i still have my favorites and, and things that i look forward to doing while i'm at silver dollar city yeah i mean and i rode everything except for one um i think cademan rode all of them but i mean at least we could have gone on the teeny tiny ones of course but um which was the barn swing is the only one i didn't go on he did and kaylin even went on it which surprised me <laughs> but Oh, I mean, it definitely has stuff for everyone. We have the small rides um, that little, like, under the 36 inches can ride. Um, and most of those are in Fireman's Landing. No, well, not well, those no, there's, rides. There's, yeah, yeah. Those some... rides are over at the, the Grand Exposition area, I can't even say it, is where the smallest of the rides are um, for the kid, like, it has the puddle jumper kind of... Um, rides for kids under 36 inches. It was a great little area because they also had some of the more uh, elaborate, um, like the giant swing, not the barn swing, but the... the swing, like a, like a spinny swing. The merry-go-round. Yeah, yeah. yeah like Up a, in the air, like a spinny image. swing in the air. Yeah, yeah, that thing. <laughs> Uh, so they have that. They also have um, teacups. The teacups there. Those kinds of rides. He's not a big fan of. Yeah. So the kids will try to and and Ch Chantel will try and make the teacup <laughs> spin as fast as possible. And my goal is to try and hold it as still as I can. So that's yeah. kind of what we do there. Or we ride in separate cups. 
Yeah. <laughs> or I don't write it. <laughs> so. And they have rides that you wouldn't think would make you sick or um, dizzy. Like you wouldn't go as fast as the pirate ship. Yeah, that's so that's kind of just a ship that goes back and forth, up and down. No, that one's the other one. I'm talking about the one that goes around. Oh, the one that's... And yeah. it's like uh, a roller coaster, but it went super fast. <laughs> and I mean, and it's just very jerky and you would not think that from the looks of it is not as bad as when you ride it. Yeah, I did not go on that one. But yeah, there are a lot of different rides. Yeah, but mainly the kids' rides are in the Grand Ex Exposition area and also Fireman's Landing. They have a lot of choices too, including like a ball pit area that you can get inside, especially if you're going on a day that's really hot or a day that's really cold. That's a great area if you have little kids to kind of take a break from that environment and go into another area where they can still have fun, but also either warm up or cool down depending on the time of year. Yeah, because their favorite thing was to shoot the balls at each other because you can shoot them. Uh, they have like little like cannons and it's what, three stories that you could go up? Yeah, that's and, pretty, it's a big area. And, uh, you would throw these balls into all these air shooters and they do different things like a bunch at one time or one cannon at once. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> Another thing that Silver Dollar City is really well known for is all the different events and activities that they have throughout the year that change throughout the year. So that's something else that really sets them apart from other theme parks is that they have all of these different festivals and, and activities that you can choose from. Yeah, I mean, the it's a great variety. And it's, it changes about mm, every two, sometimes three to four weeks, they'll have a different um, a festival coming up. So like right now, uh, it's just opening week. You'll have in a couple of weeks, we should have um, the street fair or street festival, which is, we... we I think we made it for the tail end of it. And we really wish we would have made it sooner on that one. That was a delicious one to try. Um, and then they have like kids festival and moon fest where they will um, stay open later. Uh, that's during the summer. So then they'll stay open till, I don't know, I think it was 10 o'clock um, on some nights. And um, then they also have like the harvest festival where it's pumpkins galore. Um, and then Christmas too. So... And that one is definitely a do not miss. And as far as food is concerned, I think my favorite festival is the uh, barbecue. The bluegrass. The bluegrass festival. So if you yeah. look like bluegrass music and barbecue, that's definitely a time that you should not miss. Um, tons of great food. Not that they don't have good food all the time, but there are a lot of different barbecue options there that are unique to that certain time of the year. And great music. And I mean, oh, and we can't forget the Walindas. That was an awesome show that they did during the kids festival. That was definitely one of all festivals. Stop and go to that one. Um, yeah. So the Walinda family, they're a uh, basically like a, a circus performing family. They do high wire uh, acts and they're world known. So that was a really, really great opportunity to see them in person perform. And they're supposed to be back in 2023 for this year too. So that's something that you have to go and see. That might be one where we actually go back and see because yeah. that was that how good it was. Yeah. I guess we need to get those tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Something else Silver Dollar City is known for is all of their crafts that they have. So they not only have craft activities that you can watch throughout the year. So they've got like blacksmith shop. They have a, a glass blowing shop, uh, which is really fun to watch, uh, especially with the little kids. And they have a lot of things that you can purchase that are for sale as well. So like for the glass blowing shop, uh, for example, we ended up picking up this, which is hydrized so it will focus, uh, which is a glass octopus. So this we have up in the kids' bathroom is just a decorative piece, and they know that they're not supposed to touch it. And they haven't touched it, which is great. Um, but this is something that you can find, or things that you can expect to find at Silver Dollar City in the glass blowing area. Um, they also they have a candy shop. Don't forget that they one. They have candy shops. Yeah, you can get taffy. You can get uh, fresh peanut brittle in one of the As shops. As they do all the demonstrations in front of you. That, I mean, that was really neat to watch them and how they make the old time like taffy and watching them pull it. And also with the peanut brittle, which I mean, I never got to try it because I can't do peanuts, but I loved watching just how they do it. And then the kids really enjoyed it. I think especially the fresh is so different from when it's cooled down and hardened. Yeah, definitely a different flavor. They also have kettle corn stations which is great. So they make the kettle corn in front of you. And they'll also, for birthdays, 
If oh, it's yeah. on your birthday, they'll give you a free bag of popcorn, which is really cool too. So, And that was one thing we were not anticipating. We actually were there for all three boys' birthdays. I mean, which two of them are at Christmas time and one of them is That's earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and we were able to do that. And it was completely just something a memorable experience for them. Because then they got to wear their little tags around and everyone would wish them happy birthday. And then there was little things like getting a little bag of kettle corn and, you know, it was just a special time for them. It was fun. There's also things that you can purchase and bring home too. They have things available like uh, apple butter or maple syrup and just different kind of old timey uh, foods that you can purchase and enjoy throughout the year. So that's also something that is available as an option. Oh yeah, and speaking of, when you go to five festivals, did you know you get a ornament? I knew that, but did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> so like this last year we went and let's see. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I know that looks weird, but that's what we have to do. <laughs> so anyway, we got that ornament after going to five. You have to get it during the Christmas festival. So that counts as your fifth or uh, festival, if you anything. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it was awesome that all of us were able to get one. The only one that didn't get it was Kagan because he was on the adventure pass. So the other critical thing is you have to have a season pass in order to get that, but it's completely free and it was a great memory. Yeah. Nice little perk. The other thing too is during the harvest, I think it's the harvest festival time, they actually have local, uh, craft, like crafts booths with local people, or I think people even from around the country come in and, and set up craft booths in the park. So that's another great opportunity. If crafts are something that you really enjoy seeing, then definitely plan on visiting Silver Dollar City during the Harvest Festival in the fall. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one where they um, carved gourds and things. What was that? With the, they did an octopus, right? It was yep. really neat. And, um, and they, and sh like a ship too, and just different things. Yeah. yeah. And then they really cool. have funny scenes with them too. So yeah. <laughs> definitely check them out. Yeah, there were a couple big things that we can't forget to mention that happened last year. This year too, I mean, and really. This year too, yeah. So uh, they're actually, this this year in 2023, this is the last year that they're going to have fire in the hole, or at least the original fire in the hole in the park. Now, this is one of the oldest rides. Actually, it's the oldest indoor roller coaster in the country, and and maybe even the world, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it was the first one. It was the first one, yeah. So uh, it's a indoor roller coaster, it's a theme roller coaster, and uh, there's even like a water, uh, like a splashdown area towards the end of the ride. But you don't so get it's terribly wet. No, you don't get one. no, but it is very, very unique experience. So if you've never done that, or if you want to relive those memories before it goes away forever, then this is the year that you have to go and do that at Silver Dollar City. Now, the rumor is, and I think it's more than a rumor, that they're building a brand new fire in the hole that's probably going to be open for next season. So that's something else that we're definitely going to have to go and check out. But for now. This is like the time to go and see the original. Yeah, because that's only, they have not, there's been no confirmation about it. So the biggest thing is it is the last of it. While it is a really old ride, it is going to be one that is terribly missed. So make sure to get out there and see it. Yeah. The other thing too that happened last year is the train that goes all around the park. This is a, a, a real train that was installed when the park opened originally, I think, or shortly after they first opened. Um, it actually derailed this last year. Once the train derailed, they had to go through all this investigation and see what happened and figure out, make sure everything was safe. Uh, and so this year it's supposed to be open again, but for the last, I don't know, probably last two, three months of the year, last year it was, it was shut down. If I remember right, it happened in October. Um, or right before, yeah, could, yeah. because we were supposed to, we were hoping to be October, on it, um, for in November and December, we just, there was, it wasn't open. Yeah. So, and that's a big part of the park too, when it comes to Christmas, because you get to tour the whole park and see all the Christmas lights, but yeah, you know, it just wasn't an option. Right. And they are doing and uh, making some improvements to it. Um, and the way of like for strollers and wheelchairs, before, it was really hard to push it over at the crossings, so they've smoothed and laid new track there. Um, and then I think they've also been doing it around some of the different bins, just trying to make sure they're improving the safety and everything. It was just an unfortunate accident, and they've learned and they are, they're improving, trying to make sure it doesn't ever happen again. Yeah, it's I mean, a really great ride. Not only do you get to see all in the park, but you also get to have uh, see a show that uh, you get stopped on in the middle of hey, the... Hey, hey, hey! Right? <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's an, uh, that is something that you definitely cannot miss. So we're looking forward to that being open again. Yes. All right, so that's pretty much the video for us. These are all of our highlights from last year. If there's anything that you have questions about, be sure to leave us a comment below and we'll try and answer those as quickly as we can. Also, if there's something that we missed that you enjoyed uh, or you enjoy seeing at Silver Dollar City, be sure to leave us a comment below on We'd that as well. Know. We'd love to know. Check it out the next time we're there. All right, I think that's it for this video. I think we need to call them the little one. I think we need to call them the little one. All right, that's it for this video. We will see you in the next adventure. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Go.